What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on Tactical Pineapple, we are discussing the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. That is it. A lot fucking happened today. I was really shocked. Um, Kyle took the stand. We're going to talk about what happened. First and foremost, today's video, as usual, is sponsored by store.tacticalpineapple.com. It's where you can get our merch. I designed that merch. I put it out there. Uh, it is available up to 3XL on Amazon, so head on over there today. Take a look at that. We are also obviously sponsored by tacticalpineapple.com slash express, the Pineapple Express holsters, uh, universal mounted, pretty much any position, whether it's in your glove box, on a wall, on the center console of your vehicle, wherever you need to mount a pistol, flush mounted, head on over there, look at what we got available, completely revamped form system. It is even better now than it was before. It is full release. So like I said, head on over there, tacticalpineapple.com slash express. And without further ado, we're gonna get into the Kyle Rittenhouse trial updates. Um, I had planned every video for the rest of this week to be released exclusively on Odyssey. We are going to put this today on YouTube as well. Um, I cannot deprive those who stuck to YouTube of these updates, specifically the update from today. I know many people are going to constantly see and there's going to be memes of Kyle Rittenhouse breaking down on the stand. What does that mean? What did it look like and what are people saying? Um, first of all, people are saying it seemed fake. It didn't seem very real. He broke down, had a really hard time answering some questions. He didn't even get to the shooting portion of it and completely fucking collapsed on the stand, essentially. Um, they took a 10 minute break. He came back and he worked his way right through it like nobody fucking ever, like he never broke down. So uh, a lot of people instantly said, well, he was faking it. Um, I believe it wasn't faked. Uh, I know people are going to say I'm biased, whatever, fuck off. I don't give a shit. Um, this is my unbiased opinion. I believe it was real. He was hyperventilating. I don't believe it was necessarily an emotional breakdown, a PTSD-style breakdown. I believe the entire working of the whole thing, um, him actually hitting the stand, the nerves, everything kind of all culminated as he got to the section where... He knew literally his life depended upon that testimony. And the reality is, is probably what happened off screen that nobody got to see was his attorneys literally looking at Kyle and saying, look, I don't give a shit what you got to do to get through this. You decided that you wanted to get on that stand. Your life now depends on your ability to get through this conversation with Mr. Banger. And he did. Um, that being said, I don't know how well Mr. Binger got through the fucking cross-examination of uh, Mr. Rittenhouse. Uh, under direct examination, they walked through, they proved kind of everything that they needed to, they said what they needed to say. Uh, but however, Thomas Binger, the prosecuting attorney, um, really is not on the good graces of the judge anymore. So Judge Schroeder uh, is very particular. Uh, Thomas Binger has worked with Judge Schroeder in the past that he knows this. Um, so you stick to the rulings, that's just the way it is. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Judge Schroeder is a by-the-book kind of guy. Um, that being said, apparently his ringtone is also very based in the fact that it's proud to be an American. So, uh, congratulations. that I had talked about. Congratulations, Mr. Bruce Schroeder, I am a fan. Um, that, uh, however, did kind of lead everybody in the comments sections of the more left-leaning places to be saying that you're biased and should be removed, but I believe he's holding very steadfast in, in this case, and and I know, like I said again, biased, whatever, fuck off. Uh, I'll continue to say that, fuck off. Um, I have nothing writing on this other than being an American who believes that Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent of any wrongdoing in the case. So, yeah, I guess I'm biased, so fuck off. <laughs> I'm entitled to my bias. Uh, I have no reason not to be biased. So, that being said, um, it was very refreshing um, to see the prosecutor get his pee-pee slapped live on television. Um, there were tw two occasions today 
uh, uh, twice that the judge actually asked the jury to step out. Um, the first time he asked them simply to step out to the library, um, which is basically a room off shooting that's supposed to be silented out from the, the court. Now they stepped away, did their thing, and when that happened, uh, Mr. Binger got his first ass chewing, and I will insert that video right here. He's commenting on my client's right to remain silent. No, Your Honor, I am making the point that after hearing everything in the case, now he's tailoring his story to what has already been introduced. The problem is, this is a grave constitutional violation for you to talk about the defendant's silence. And that is, and, and, the, and you're right, you're right on the, you're right on the borderline. And you may, you may be over, but uh, it better stop. Understood. This is, I can't think of the case, the initial case on it, but it's, uh, this is not perfect. So, after that ass chewing, which was blatantly about the Fifth Amendment, his right to remain silent, and his right to not actually incriminate himself, um, Thomas Binger decided to continue his interrogation, moved on. Uh, you could tell he was a bit salty from the whole thing, but did his thing. And then eventually they came around to the second pee-pee slap, essentially, uh, where Mr. Binger kind of went on a leading question, starting to ask certain things, and, and kind of worked his way toward the whole, basically, you cannot defend with deadly force property, uh, which Kyle agreed to. Because the fact of the matter is, is he wasn't defending property with, uh, you know, deadly force. So that turned into a round of questioning, though, that led Mr. Binger to think that he was okay to introduce 904-4 uh, exclusions from the pretrial, namely the video from the CVS pharmacy where Kyle Rittenhouse uh, apparently said that he wished he had his AR-15 rifle and he would shoot said shoplifters. Um, this has been excluded from the court case. It is not relevant. It happened 15 days prior to the incident. And, uh, well, frankly, it led to this video. First of all, Your Honor, this was the subject of a motion. I'm well aware of that. And the court left the door open. This for me, not for you. My understanding of You your should have come and asked for, uh, for reconsideration. You did on the one motion, and in fact, I granted your motion for reconsideration. That was excuse not our me, motion. I, I, I uh, not sorry, uh, excuse me. I, uh, I did, I granted. We did not move that for reconsideration. That was their motion. I, I, we have I, not filed any me. motions to reconsider in this case. That was their motion for reconsideration, which I denied. But uh, I said I denied it or I indicated a bias towards denial is what I did. Held it open with a bias towards denial. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury? You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law, it's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that, and it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know what you're up to. Well, that is the shortened version of that video because it was three or four minutes of just complete tirade with a little bit of fucking pandering and backpedaling by Mr. Binger. But there were some oversteps and, and things like that, obviously, and, and he's feeling that probably tonight. Um, that actually led to, right after lunch, this video. What's up? Hi. Um, Judge, I'm uh, at, the, at the lunch break. Um, I had done some research, and at this point, um, the defense is going to be making a motion for a mistrial. However, that motion is going to be requested with prejudice. Um, I'm, I'm aware that the court's aware that normally a, a defense motion uh, for a mistrial does not uh, preclude a retrial. I understand that. There are exceptions to that, however. And um, the case that I uh, am drawing this from is Day versus State. 
it's 76 with second 588. And what it says is, an exception to this rule exists where a defendant's motion is necessitated by prosecutorial impropriety designed to avoid an acquittal. Now, what has happened in, uh, in this, this morning was uh, two times. Uh, the state had commented on Mr. Rittenhouse's right to remain silent. The first time he was admonished by the court, the second time the court had the jury leave and re-admonished him on that. Prior to Mr. Rittenhouse testifying, this court addressed various things with not only Mr. Rittenhouse, but with the lawyers. You had cited various statutes and then you had asked if that anything had would be coming up on, for example, I think 90608. One of the other things you addressed was 90404. And you had said that based on the information that had come out at the trial, nothing had changed as it relates to your ruling. Shortly thereafter. Mr. And the defense obviously asking for a mistrial with prejudice. Uh, I said in an earlier video I released today that we would talk about mistrial with prejudice. Um, there's probably a lot of people who are going to cover it much better, but essentially a mistrial with prejudice just means that um, the mistrial is based upon prosecu prosecutorial misconduct. And based on that prosecutorial misconduct, which is being done purposefully by the prosecutor to lead to a mistrial um, so that they get to kick the cat again, essentially, um, that they get to have another attempt at a trial. Um, they're basically saying, hey, this guy is trying to throw the trial so that he can start over because this one ain't going his way. Um, I believe that's probably the truth. However, Judge Schroeder is not likely to rule upon that. He did say that he would take it into advisement um, and it will probably come into his post-trial you know, play. So we'll see how that develops. Um, interestingly, there was a couple other incidents where Mr. Binger was basically slapped, you know, kind of on the wrist, nothing too harshly from that point forward. Uh, but it, it all led to, at the end of everything, just kind of nothing. There was literally no point made by the prosecutor throughout the entire point, or the entire process of the interrogation. Um, he attempted to basically put the blame on Kyle which we knew was going to happen as far as, you know, him being there with his gun created a situation where people felt threatened and as such they acted in self-defense, um, which in any case, this whole thing, we knew this was going to be the sticking point of it. Um, after the Rosenbaum shooting, the which I believe to be 100% fully justified, and they kind of didn't really do a whole lot to, to prevent that from being justified. Um, the other three shootings which led to one person dead and one person injured and a person who still for some reason is unnamed in the whole thing um, to go away uh, without issue. Um, they, they led to this whole thing where those individuals were acting in self-defense and I don't believe that's the case at all. I don't believe any sane individual believes it to be the case and I don't believe the jury is going to find that to be the case. So. We'll see how that all plays out. Uh, Rittenhouse, I'm not still sure how well I feel about him taking the stand. I do know that there's only one person who can testify to the mindset that he had that night, and it's him because of speculation. Nobody else has that opportunity. So I guess at least that point, that point of charge has been discussed and is out there. Um, that being said, apparently there are three more witnesses after today to be called to the stand by the defense. Uh, they expect tomorrow to be basically witness, uh, direct examination, then cross-examination for all three of those. Um, and it sounds like they were talking about whether or not they were gonna be working Saturday or working Monday. I believe the decision was made to work Monday. So it sounds like the trial is going to end early next week, uh, which extends past a little bit the two week you know, time frame, but not too much. Uh, I believe, according to the judge, uh, the jury was cleared through Tuesday, so we'll see what happens with that. The deliberation, I don't believe, will take too long. Um, one other note, obviously, was 
um, and this is probably not going to be talked about too much today, but I'll try to find a video clip and insert it somewhere around here, um, where the judge legitimately said, do not believe, this is a direct talking to the jury, do not listen to what this person says or what that person says about what the law is. Uh, at one point prior to deliberation, the judge will explain the laws uh, that pertain to what Kyle Rittenhouse is being charged with. And at that point, then the jury will have informed information about those laws directly um, and not to believe what either the defense or the prosecution are saying about what the law is because they're going to present what they believe the law is and not what the law actually is. So, like I said, that'll be a less talked about point, but it is going to come up as a very important one later in the future because interpretation of law versus what the directive of law is, um, is two different things. And it could play out very well or very poorly for Mr. Rittenhouse when it comes to that. So uh, without running the risk of making this video too insanely long, like I said, this will be a YouTube slash Odyssey upload. Um, I cannot exclude YouTube from these updates just because I believe they're very important, specifically today's updates. So without further ado, I will end the video on that. Like I said, if you've made it to this point of the video, uh, you are a fucking rock star. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those fucking things, the bells, the clickies, the doodads, all that shit. It helps us, helps the algorithm because YouTube fucking hates me and that's why I do Odyssey. So uh, if you are not already, Get over on Odyssey, follow the link in the description, join us over there, um, be one of my first followers. It matters to me, it matters to you, it matters to America. So uh, until the next video, folks, always carry your pistols, Brandon fucking hates them.